really excited to present the Q&A for the incredible documentary that we just saw here at Outshine, Jeanette. We have the subject, Jeanette, here. And the best friend who is also one of the subjects. So the first question that I have for you is how did you get involved with this project? Obviously you were in the Pulse nightclub the night of the horrible events, but please tell us how this you know, came from that to you doing this wonderful documentary. Okay. Um, well, this first started, I met the uh, director, Maris Karan. Um, I was actually doing a uh, Love Has No Labels campaign with the um, Ad Council. So I had done some commercial for them and I met Maris there. I guess they asked her to do a, a little short uh, film a little interview style uh, with me, and um, that's how we, her and I met. But after shooting something really short, she felt like there was something more, more to, I guess, pretty much what what, what we had. And um, she called me uh, after another type of shooting that happened in in Florida, and you know she called me just to have a conversation with me. She didn't want to, especially coming out of Pulse. She didn't want to talk about anything about shooting or filming and things like that. And she pretty much, you know, uh, opened up to me in regards to her vulnerability. I mean, this is a woman that I had met that I'm coming off of a mass shooting. I'm coming off a bunch of things that were going on in my life. And, you know, she allowed herself to open up and be vulnerable with me. There's a lot of things that I learned about the director. I'm looking at her, you know, this is an American white woman, I'm a Hispanic woman, why does she want to shoot a film on me, for what? Uh, and on top of that, I'm very protective over my family and my friends. It's like, okay, someone is gonna, you know, film me. Like, there's nothing really interesting about my story, because realistically speaking is, you know, we, we all have a documentary within us, right? We all have gone through some type of trials and tribulations, so we really, you know, connected on that relationship first and foremost in order for her to just shoot my my daily living. And this is years of, of her shooting, uh, you know, me through everything that I was going through. So, yeah. One of the themes that I noticed seemed to be that of survivor's guilt. Can you talk a little bit about that? It's, it's real, survivor's guilt, you know. Um, I never liked when people told me, you made it out for a reason. There's nothing more. I'm, I'm not an individual that is more special than anybody else who died that day. I'm another human being. So to tell me that I made it for a reason would offend me because there was a lot of great people who died. I have my friend who lost her best friend, Shane. We lost so many people. So at no point does it necessarily feel proud to be a survivor because we have to deal with the daily struggles every day. And it's hard being amongst your friends and being a survivor and having other friends that are gone and it's something that I still deal with. Um, there's survivor's guilt because I invited everybody to go out with me that night. I went through a breakup. I have, I have a very supportive friends. We have E, who's a straight man, who came with me. He met me that night. I invited, I invited everybody out. My brother actually came with me. So I had my, my, my gay friends, right? And I had my straight friends. And um, I'm very protective. So do you think that I even want E to go through what he goes through on a daily basis? No, I put all of that on me. And um, this is why it's so important for me to just continue to spread positivity. I made it out because I was jumping up and down like a monkey, I guess, trying to get out of there. But I can't necessarily say that I'm proud that I'm a survivor. 
there was a great part in the documentary where he starts talking about how life has to go on. You you come out of the doc, you know you come out of such a terrible experience, and yet the bills are still there. It's like you don't have a break. Do you want to talk a little bit about your experience in the documentary? <clears throat> I'm gonna try to do this without crying. Um, yeah, like you said it. It's we didn't really have a chance to like soak it in. You know what I mean? Like it happened Saturday going into Sunday. Like I just worked a twelve hour shift. I was in bed when Jeanette called me, you know what I'm saying? So in my mind, like I'm like, I can't die. Like this is you know what I'm saying? Like I can't go out like that, you know what I'm saying? And I thank God Jeanette made it out, Jeff, her brother, everybody we came with, you know, I'm just thankful we all made it out. It was, I don't know if I answered your question because I got a lot of thoughts in my head. Thank you. We're so happy to have them here. And I'm so sorry that I didn't mean to, to no, bring no, up no. anything like that uh, to make you, you know. No, it's, it's But it's, it was just so inspirational. We all, of course, um, here in Miami, were just watching with, you know, this terrible feeling. It's one of those days that everybody remembers where they were when they heard the news. And so, you know, to hear your story was just wonderful. And I love that you threw yourself into the coaching yeah. and the bodybuilding mm -hmm. and opened up your life a little bit about your personal struggles with acceptance with your family. Could you speak a little bit about that? And then we'll, you know, we yeah. need to move on from that. Um, so when it came to shooting, obviously I'm, I'm very protective over my family. Um, I had a fear of what I was going to see on, on the screen because I come from, you know, a Puerto Rican background. I, I grew up never speaking to back to my parents. So, of course, I I have a lot of respect for my mom. So for me to have that type of argument, that's that's hard because I don't want anyone to think that I disrespect my mom. Um, I commend my mother for her her strength spiritually. And the reason why I do commend her for that is because you see still the love that she has as a mother where we do wrong as parents when we condemn our children and make it seem like they're going to hell or all this stuff and that love is no longer there. So I didn't want to see my mom argue, you know, me arguing with my mom because I'm thinking, how is everyone else going to take it? Regardless of me not having a relationship with my mother prior to post, right? She's still my mother and I would defend her. And if anyone has anything to say, right, we're still going to protect, right? The protector within ourselves, especially when we grew up not having that. So I was afraid to see that. I didn't want to see that because I love my mother. So there was, you know, that and, and everything else that, that I was going through, that emotion at that moment, I, I exploded. And honestly, I'm so happy that, you know, that argument was super intense, way more than what you guys have seen. Um, but to see the love that my mom has for her daughters, to me is, I grew up without the love. So the, the movie really feels like my way to say in my little girl voice, you see my mom does love me. And that's, it's hard. You know, I have an amazing relationship with my mother. You know, now my mom has her strong beliefs, but any one of my friends that are part of the LGBT community, they can all tell you that my mom treats everybody with love. So she's just firm in certain beliefs. If I was with a man, she would say, you know, you're not supposed to be doing that. So, but yeah. So was this whole thing very much a healing for you? Absolutely. You know, it's it, it's a healing. When I look back at this film, there's so much growth for me, you know, mentally, my, my, my mindset. There's definitely that. But most importantly, we have to understand that life is going to continue to throw things our way. But we can't give up. We're dealing with so much mental illness, um, you know, in today's world. And, you know, it is easy to give up. But it's life truly is about us fighting, us fighting, you know, just until the end, until we possibly can't anymore. Sorry, y'all. Um, it just came to my mind now that I'm not crying anymore. Oh, um, I had a chance to think. Um, one of the things that I kind of reflected on through the week, like thinking about the movie, is like how even after everything, right, she was still caring about all of us, 
and that we were caring about her, like making sure she was okay. And it's like emphasizing like no matter what you're going through, like always check on each other, you know what I mean? Check on people that you care about, check on uh, your, your partners, your friends, and everything because you never know you know what they're going through you know and it made me feel like i'm not alone you know what i'm saying because in my world you know i am by myself dealing with this you feel me i don't i don't really have you know these are my friends from the lgbt community you know so when i go home to my world you know people kind of like what were you doing there you know what i'm saying so i'm thankful that i have Jeanette. i have may i have everybody for my own mentality. So it's like, please, please check on your loved ones. Please um, don't let them feel alone. Don't let them feel uh, neglected, abandoned, like all of those things. So yeah. that's what I wanted to kind of put out there. I, I had a good question. Yeah. First of all, I wish more people would have come because this was such a beautifully crafted film and it was so enjoyable. And I'm not gonna hold it against you that you're wearing a Celtics shirt. <laughs> I thought about that when I in came Miami, to Miami. In Miami Heat town, we'll let, we'll let you get away with it, but there could be people waiting for you outside. <laughs> Just saying. I've survived more. With all said and done, I wanted to hear from both of you. When you watch the film, and you watch your story that you're telling on film, what, what do you walk away with after you watch it? And even after you watch it, today after I'm sure it's not the first time you've seen it what do you walk away with what what kind of emotion do you have um there, there's a lot of emotion I, I still this is my third time watching it and there's still tears in my eyes I know every feeling that I had I knew what I was going through during that time um so it's when I see it I just truly truly want it to inspire people to continue you know to fight I hope that parents can watch this as well um, to have the mentality of it's agreeing to disagree with maybe your children's lifestyle but not abandoning them not adding to their anxiety and their depression and everything else that they have to face out with it you know in the world in their daily life Home is home, and that's where you should be receiving the most love. So I really hope that parents are able to see this and say, you know what, if they have a belief or whatever, it's okay, but love and hug and hold your children. Because that night, there are some parents that didn't know that their children were part of the LGBT community, and they find this out during that time is very hard. Why? Because there's a sense of fear within people to even open up to their family. So for me, if this can inspire, and this is not just for the LGBT community, this is for every single human being who faces trials and tribulations and setbacks. And do not, do not for once put us in a certain position that just because we've been part of a mass shooting, right, that that differs from any type of anxiety or PTSD that other people are experiencing because if you don't know what it's like to be a part of an of a massacre right you don't have that type of understanding but let's say you lost your mother and that brings depression right one is not worse than the other so orlando post is not worse than what each and any one of you guys are actually you know going through or have gone through in the past so i really want to make sure that that is very clear this film is about pushing through no matter what life throws at us Beautiful stuff. You, I want to hear. I'd like to hear what you think real quick, and then we can. Thank you. Unless Jen has another question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, obviously, I ditto everything she just said. But for me personally, it makes me want to be a better person. Um, makes me want to be more open-minded and accepting of other people's lifestyles. Um, we were in San Francisco this past weekend um, for the film festival, and I was comfortable, and I'm proud of myself to say that like I didn't feel, you know what I mean, any any anything negative, you know? And there's a lot of different, different people and I'm proud of myself in that regard. You know, I don't have any hate in my heart towards any community. And it makes me want to spread more love, spread more positivity, um, be a better man, you know, things like that. So yeah, I'm proud of myself for that. This is gonna I, I've done a lot of Q and A's, and 
Jennifer's doing a masterful job up there, but this is one of the most beautiful Q&As that I've had the pleasure to witness, and I thank you so much no, for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Mark much. Mark is our executive director. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming, and this was simply an unbelievable, inspirational film. We look forward to seeing it and where it goes, and thank you so much for bringing it to our festival. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.